Hello there and welcome to another jaw dropping IEM review. Today we have the Arti R1. Arti sent me this review unit, uh, but all thoughts and opinions are still mine. I am not affiliated, but I will include a link in the description if you want to check the product out. Let's get on with the review. The box, it's uh, neat, clean looking. Specifications in English, English here. It has an outer sleeve. And then a really nice clean looking box. Starts out like this. The unboxing is the usual. You would have the IEMs here in the phone. There's some literature. There's a case that holds the cable, cable tie, two sets of ear tips. Um, Nice little touch in the in the packaging is this slot here in the foam that makes room for the zipper in the case. I just wanted to point that out because it's um, I don't usually see that in in packages. Um, overall, good stuff. The configuration and specifications. Um, the RTR1 is a triple dynamic driver configuration uh, that has a three-way crossover, so each uh, DD has its own frequency range. Uh, there's one 8mm beryllium coated DD for the lows and two 6mm titanium dome DDs for the mids and highs respectively. Impedance of the set is 20.4 ohms. Sensitivity is 102 decibels, and the price of the set is around 70 US dollars. Let's take a look at the accessories next. All right, so the stock cable is actually pretty nice. It's four wires, uh, braided copper, with this uh, dark insulation. Uh, it looks really pleasing to my eye, and I, I like the nice, clean, simple connectors it has. The only problem maybe with the cable is that this slider, if you can even call it that, is it, it, it's pretty bad. Um, it's just this plastic thing that you can't really... It's pretty difficult to slide around, and uh, it, it's difficult to use as a slider, really. But otherwise, I mean, the cable is really good. You rarely get this uh, this uh, quality stock cables, even at this price point. So that's nice. Then there's the case. It's a nice arty branding on it. It's a it's a fabric case. Uh, pretty basic on the outside. Maybe a bit small in size. Uh, so it comes with a cable tie and two sets of uh, ear tips. But the case itself on the inside, it has a functional nice strap and a pouch. And a lot of uh, these basic cases don't, don't even have these functions. So that's good to have. So it, 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 I, I do like the case. Then there's the ear tips. There's 07 clones for the stock ear tips. And then these, I first thought these would be like base ear tips, but they seem to be pretty close in tonality a characteristic uh, as the 07 clones. But yes, you, you do get uh, three sizes of 07s and three sizes of these black ones. Overall, I would say that that's uh, all right accessories. I would expect at least this much from the 70 US dollar price point. So then the build and comfort. Uh, the shell is aluminium. I think it's good quality in the machining. The nozzle contours work well. The nozzle has a tiny lip that might not be able to hold onto all ear tips, but I had no trouble with mine. The nozzle has a good clear stopper step uh, for the ear tip stem, making deeper insertions easier when the ear tip uh, can't escape onto the shell. I think this is like a uh, pretty comfortable set. It, it definitely was for my ears. Uh, it's surprisingly lightweight despite having multiple DDs and crossovers inside. It depends a bit on personal ear anatomy, how well the shell contours support the, the shell on your ear, but for me it works wonders. <laughs> no pressure issues. There's three 
vents at the back of the shell and I would say overall this is great stuff in, in terms of build and comfort. For ear tip rolling, as usual, I go through my most used ear tips a lot more than what you see here. Uh, for the R1, I found the stock ear tips to sound nice. The the Zero Seven clones are a staple in the in this hobby for good reason. I didn't really find any benefit to slightly bassier ear tips uh, like the these Duno candies or. Uh, final audio type E. Meanwhile, these uh, white bore ear tips like the Tangsu Sanjai white bores or the TRI Clarions, mm, I, I feel like they took me pretty close to feeling fatigued by the treble, treble of the set. I don't know if there's benefit from going white bore really. My ears really liked the Dunu SNS the most. But there's nothing wrong with the stock ear tips. Um, it, there's just a, a little bit of um, extra tightness I feel from the SNS ear tips that is good for me. So the Duno SNS is what I went with with the uh, Arty R1. All right. So the sound of the set. The overall tonality of the Arty R1 is a V shape. Uh, with not too much brightness in the treble, it's more focused on warmth in the bass and low mids than big sub bass. And I think that there's a there's a fair bit of energy in the upper mids, and I really do enjoy that kind of tuning for that uh, vocal forward upper mids. So let's take a look at the graph that I measured with my coupler. The sub bass. Um, I like the amount of sub bass, there's rumble, but not too much. Like plenty of dance and pop songs sound pleasing and not overbearing. The quality is there. Daft Punk's Lose Yourself to Dance is one of my main test tracks for sub bass and it sounds very good. Then going to the bass. As a warm set, the R1 has a bunch of bass quantity. But it isn't exactly what I'd call punchy. The quality comes off slightly pillowy, uh, as, as the bass decay is a little bit slow, I could, I could say. Um, it, it's not muddy though. I, I wouldn't go that far as to use very negative words to describe it. It's still good bass. Uh, tone weight just might leave people wanting. Dimmu Borger's Abrahadabra, the album, it has lean mixed double bass and it's still good, but I do wish there was more punchiness and more tightness. Then going into the mids, uh, very enjoyable mids. The tuning doesn't go for sharp scoops or tucks and this works very nicely for bass guitars or low tuned electric guitars. Uh, I love listening to metal on this set for the mids uh, as well as jazz music. For something in between those genres, uh, Vikate has some nice rock guitars and their song A Engeleita is very enjoyable on the R1. Then going into the upper mids, the strengths of the set definitely are here, with the, with the higher mids, the upper mids. Uh, I like how the R1 handles like higher tuned instrumentation and vocals. Hayatus Coyote is another, another uh, artist that I really like. Uh, testing with their music. Their song Swamp Thing is very enjoyable on this. The layering of upper mids and, and other content in, in the song just comes off as it should be. So it's good stuff here. Mm, lastly the treble. Listening to Stamina's album X, which is another album that I've used a lot recently, um, I focused on the drum cymbals and higher tuned guitars it has. Especially on the song Verenpiirretty Viiva, I get this treble sparkle feeling. Not metallic, but hmm, actually, wait, is, is all metal music metallic? Uh, I need to think about this. Anyway, no sibilance, um, but not dark either. So I really like this treble tuning of the R1. Then we have the technicalities. 
I wouldn't really call this a very technical set, but it does have standouts, like the separation with upper mids and treble content. I feel like the crossover is done well there. Um, there's no specifically bad text. It's a good average performance in terms of detail, soundstage and imaging. Uh, timbre is natural as far as I can tell. I'm not getting any big deviations in note characteristics as far as timbre goes. The R1 actually is a good gaming set as well if you're into that kind of thing. I like using it for PvP games. These days I mostly just play Hunt Showdown and uh, it was great with that. The imaging works very well. Alright, let's take a look at some comparisons to other IEMs. The main competition of this set would probably be this Tangsu Xuan Nu. And this is a very difficult task comparing these sets. The, the Xuan Nu differs in mids tonality and treble. And I would say the R1 has an advantage in the treble, being slightly more clear there. But the Xuan Nu handles the mids separation better. And that ends up having the bass also a bit punchier. So here I would say that if, if bass and mids are more your thing, go with the Xuan Nu. And if the upper mids and treble are more of a priority for you, you can go with the RT R1. Both are still great sets for the price, I would say. Another comparison I want to do is the 7 Hz Sonus. Um, this is a very biased take. So, because the Sonus hits my personal preference in tonality so well. But I, I can actually challenge my bias a bit because testing with the Sonus, comparing with the, with the R1, I, I can hear the overbearing upper mids energy in the Sonus that some people have called shouty. So, actually I would probably overall uh, recommend the RTR1 over the Sonus because the RTR1 is easier to listen to, it's more relaxed. But personally, Sonus is one of my favorite sets. But I, I, I still feel like these things, there's room for all these sets, because they still do things differently. But yes, the RT, RTR1 in comparison to these two sets is pretty great. So, for a conclusion, I was surprised by the RTR1. It's relaxed in the right ways, but brings energy as well. Uh, it, it's an easy to like V shape that fits especially slower uh, rock, metal, jazz, pop music very nicely. I would recommend this set if you like what you heard in this review, definitely. Especially if you can find this at a discount on some upcoming sale, I think this is a great one to grab if you've been looking at this this set. Alright, this has been Java with Java Audio. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye bye.